two games where like I was on fire, like I was everything I did was good. And yeah. from those two games, I made NZ schools. Oh, for real? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you must have w- killed it. I wasn't even on the radar. I was like. Oh, for, oh so they just. Just from just those from two games. From those two games, the, the selectors came, watched those ke- two games, and they were like. Like the coach actually told me this when I went into camp. Because, you know, I came from Avondale, so I wasn't on the scene coming through. Like, I wasn't. My name wasn't, you know. Even when I was playing for Mags, I was just starting to make a name for myself in Auckland. Um, and then we were fortunate enough to make top four, and then from those two games, I um, I played really good. Like I got like uh, play off the top four, whatever it was called. Yeah, they um, play it down, bro. Yeah, <laughs> nah, but it was just like it was buzzy because just from those two games, I I made NZ schools. So yeah. when I went into camp, you know, the coach said, like you're just you weren't on the radar at all. Like we just came and you played so well in those two games that we couldn't. Like look away, we had to pick you up. So they so came to look at someone else. Yeah, they yeah. And then they they, they, they pretty much had their list, like their team set. Yeah. They just sort of came to see like some players play and see if anyone else stands out. And I just probably sort of just made a name for myself there, and just and then was see? fortunate enough to go with the NZ Schools team. That's that's a good thing about rugby, eh? Like mm. it, it could take that one or two games. Yeah, that's why you should always like kind of push, stick with it. You know, when you stick with it. You're like a good example yeah. of someone that's kind of just stuck at it. You know, just work quietly under the radar. But you never yeah. know. It, you, you know. never know who's watching though. Like yeah, you that's never it. You know, never know like who's watching. Scouts are everywhere now. Like yeah, word of mouth, then it's gone. That's like it. your name is there. Like yeah. you know, a, 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 a top dog coach's brother might be watching a game. And they might meet up a family bunker. Hey, have you seen have you seen this guy play for this team? You know, that's how Yeah, so it's a number. No matter what, <laughs> what what no matter what team you play for, you just gotta gotta go for it. You know, a, you know, it's the right place, watching. right? So this yeah. is the numbers game, you stick at it, man. Yeah. Like, I think now a lot more coaches are looking at um not really talent, just hard workers. Yeah. If yeah. you're willing to work hard, yeah. because I, I guess you can get there if you've yeah. got hard work. Yeah. I know a lot of people have talent, but then Yeah. See I I, had, I had to learn the hard way. Yeah, like I didn't have the hard work. I my talent just got me through. Like yeah, my talent like just got me through. I had to sort of learn that that talent, like that hard work thing. Like once I started making NZ schools and going into that professional environment, then I had to realize, oh man, th- this talent's only going to take me so far. Like I got to start putting in work. And how was that transition from just playing like being out of the squad to being noticed that you could actually make a that you you're actually one of the best in the country, like yeah. from going from nowhere to actually being picked for that. Yeah, it was weird, man. Like, like when I went into camp, I was sort of like intimidated, like because like these boys are well known and they all know each other. Like they've played together. There's, yeah, there's nothing worse than that when you go somewhere like the first day at camp or yeah. something. Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh man, if you don't know anyone, then yeah. it's kind of like. If you, you, everyone's trying to suss you out a bit. Yeah. Everyone's trying to check your vibe. Like, oh, yeah, what's this guy like? You know, kind yeah, of thing. And, I, and and at that time, I was like, I was to myself a lot, like just quiet and just like, I don't know. I just had this like, you would say like, sort of like a street mentality. Like, just like I was just, I don't know. I couldn't really open up to people or trust anyone. <laughs> yeah. I was just on my own buzz. Um, but then I just slowly learned to just like, you know, just be me and, and like don't be too intimidated by these these other players, you know, I just had to believe I was good enough to be there. So, so, uh, so you went there, you, you made schoolboys, yeah. and then um, after schoolboys, uh, you went to ITM? Was it ITM that time? Yeah. Um, so, my... So, that was sixth form. I was sixth form at the time when I, I made schoolboys. Oh, okay. So, I had one more year at school. Um, yeah. I ended up picking up an injury, um, like, close to, like, making NZ schools again. So I, I ended up not making it um, for my last year. Um, oh. And um, I ended up having a daughter at that time. So when I was seven form, my, my missus was pregnant. Um, oh, you, you had a kid? Yeah. Oh, how old were you? Um, 18. 18? Yeah. Damn, man, yeah, you're still so baby yourself, man. So man. when I went to Max, that's where I met my wife now. Mm. We're okay. still together. Um, and we met... We met in May. She fell pregnant in December, and so for my last year, like my, she was pregnant. So I was just sort of like, you know, wasn't really focused on the rugby as much, and I was like focused on that and 
sort of uh, sort of going off the rails a little bit. You know, I think I think um, finding out the news, or when when my missus was pregnant at the time, I just probably wasn't mentally there um, mm. in terms of my rugby. Yeah. Um, you know, probably I was probably just scared, nervous, or whatever of what like I got. A, I'm responsible for another human being now, so. Um, it's a lot for an eighteen-year-old to take. Yeah, away. yeah, and but I still managed to to get an academy contract with Auckland. Um, so she sh- she gave birth to our our, do- our eldest daughter now Atu, um, and at the time I was just going to at the end of that year, two thousand and eight, I was just going to academy training. Um, Were you getting paid for that? Were you getting yeah. any money for that? Oh, yeah, okay. it wasn't too much, but part of the part of the the contract is that you get this contract, but you have to be either working or um, studying. You can't just come to training and go. So they sort of trying to look after your off-field stuff, like make sure you've got something going on and not just fully focused on the rugby. Oh, okay, okay. So we just go in and train in the mornings, then go study or whatever. But they, um, the, the academy, they they paid for a um, me to do an apprenticeship, carpentry oh, okay. apprenticeship. Yeah. But like, it wasn't for me. <laughs> I, I just turned up and halfway through, I just dropped out. I was just like, like school, like was never for me. Like yeah. rugby was all I was about. The that cup of trickles, and I just like, I wouldn't turn up. I just go drinking, like you said, like yeah. the boys. And then I think from there, like when when my missus fell pregnant, that's probably where my rugby fell off a bit. Okay. Remember, I didn't, um, <clears throat> I didn't debut for ITM until I was twenty three. So from eighteen to twenty three was a big gap of just drinking and doing. Oh, so f- so for that five years you're kind of club level. Club level, yeah. Only like I made academy. I got kicked out. I got kicked out of academy. I was um, turning up drunk. Yeah. To academy trainings in the morning, and you know just the just the things that we as Pacific Islanders struggle with. You know, growing it, up, it, it, it's the norms. Yeah, even back in my day, it was just normal. Yeah, like uh, it was it's crazy yeah. to think that, like, like you know, growing up, like drinking every weekend, that was normal for us, and just mm. you know, like benders were just normal. You know what I mean? Like going for days at a time, and it was it was almost sort of praised. You know what I mean? Like who can drink the, the longest? Who can stay up? You know what <laughs> it's I mean? still like that now. Yeah, it's still, it's like, still that like that now. You know, but like at the time when I was eighteen, it was just you know when I had an opportunity. With Auckland, you know, I was sort of just throwing it away, and then I had my first one-on-one with the Auckland coach, and he pretty much told me that I wasn't gonna make it ever in rugby. He told me that to my face. He was like, "I'm telling you right now, you're never, you're never gonna be a professional rugby player." Uh, who was the coach that time? 